Today, Precarious plays Transistor. Large process detected. Oh man, I really wanted to wrap up talking about Pokemon. Pokemon is a video game. So, <laughs> what it's been making me feel recently, it's why do I play video games? Why does anyone play video games? Maybe I'm being too harsh. Maybe I'm expecting too much of Sword and Shield. You know? Yeah, how's that? Well... What is it supposed to do? Ultimately, it's... A challenging way to pass the time and exercise your brain? I, yeah, I was exactly, I was going to focus on one smaller part of that, but yeah. yeah. Ultimately, it's supposed to be something to do before I die. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> but that's really, like, that's the purpose it's supposed to serve. Entertainment, yeah. And does it... Does, does it have to be... Does everyone have to top the previous one? Does every generation of Pokemon have to outstrip the previous to be worth experiencing? Because, I mean, there are new things. There are new characters. There's a new structure. I don't like Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing. I think it's very silly. It seems very, like, style over substance. Yeah. Another chance to make Cloud Bank a better place. Mm, I feel like our sword is a little fatigued. Yeah. Just need to get some rest. When we say hungover, hungover includes fatigue, right? Seems like you're safe. I take full credit. <laughs> Smart Alex sword. Oh. What? Can I go again? <laughs> Well, I don't think that every game has to top the last one, but you also don't have to play every game. Wee. That's that's kind of where I'm at with this. I the fact of the matter is, like I I was looking at it and I was thinking Central admin sure keeps it tidy. Well, how much does it cost? Mm -hmm. It doesn't look as compelling as I found Ooh. Ultra Sun and Ultra or well, just Ultra Sun. I didn't play Ultra Moon. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, it doesn't look as compelling as I found Ultra Sun. Mm hmm But I mean, maybe if it's... Uh, ooh. Maybe if it's on some kind of sale... Yeah. I can... I can play it. Yeah, I can play it. Sure. Yeah. What else am I gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> with my time. Dang, it will not stop mashing me, and I really wish it would stop mashing me. Oh! Okay, hold on. How do I... And then try to slip through that way? Can you? Yeah. My oh, goodness. and you just go through. Okay. Okay. We do not necessarily have to engage with... Sky Arrow. <laughs> I really wish my HP would come back. That'd be super cool. I think that was just the tail. Uh, tail. Yeah, that's what it looked like. That's what it looked like. And I don't like that. Thanks for... Keen observation, buddy. Alright, anyways. But you ended up doing something else. Yeah, I ended up... So what I wanted to do, this is the, the specific Pokemon fever that I, I was feeling. Yeah. I was thinking, I want to have something nice and familiar that I can play. And I want to play a Pokemon game with a really strong theme to my, my party. Mm -hmm. Because one of the most fun experiences I've ever had was sitting down to play Ultra Sun, having not played Sun. Uh, some people say that, like, Ultra Sun degraded the original mm -hmm. in some ways. I skipped it so. because I've learned my lesson. 
<laughs> over the years. I skipped Sun and Moon and just went and waited for the, the improved version to come out. Uh, some people say that it's not really an improved version, that they messed up the story. Uh, there's no basis of comparison for me, so I, I think it's fine. Um, it's probably the most fun I've had playing a Pokemon game since Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Yeah. I sat down and I played that from the get-go without any foreknowledge. I was just like, I'm going to have a theme and my theme is going to be like myth. myth. My, my team is going to be a team of myths. So ghosts, dragons, and fairies. Cool. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. And I thought, I'm going to do that again, but I think I'm going to get a copy of Sword and I'm going to... Have a farming and ranching. Like, I'm going to have, like, a Harvest Moon team. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm going to have a Harvest Moon team. And what? Well, I thought... There. Oh, d uh, did that not count as a battle? Because I've had that one. Okay, so that must not have actually counted as a battle. Okay. Hmm. How much time do we have? We have a bit. Okay. Uh, I don't... I think I'm going to read one of these... We did miss Platt. Rest in Moyle. Let me finish up what I was going to say about Pokemon, because I could talk about this for a long time. This, to me, feels like an ongoing conversation that we've just been having for a number of years. <laughs> yeah. Um, tell me about it. I was going to play Pokemon Sword, and I was going to have like a Harvest Moon theme, and I was going to have a box of Pokemon that was titled Farming, and one that was Ranching, and if a Pokemon could reasonably fit into one or the other, they could be on the team. Mm -hmm. So it was going to be like, not Bulbasaur, because it's just like a plant lizard, mm -hmm. but yes to say like, Blossom, because it's a flower. Yeah. Or, um, Combi, or it's evolution, because bees are pollinators. Mm -hmm. That's cute. Yeah, that's <laughs> Shut adorable. Shut up. I'm adorable. <laughs> and have like a, on the ranching side, have like a mill tank or a Tauros or something like that. Or a um, Mudsdale, I think is yeah. its name. It's a big, friendly mud horse. Mm -mm. Or even maybe like a Rapidash, you know? I mean, Whatever. even a low punny would fit because yeah, you rabbits a... get ranched. Yeah, sure. I, I could do that one. Uh, or, um... There's a, a new, there's a sheep of some sort Oh, in in Sword and Shield. I probably actually wouldn't want to do Mareep because it evolves. And once it evolves to Amphros, it gets shaved and it doesn't really look like a sheep. It doesn't look like a sheep anymore. Yeah. Uh, but I watched Dan Floyd play through most of the game um, on YouTube. And it, it just, it just doesn't look like the game that I want to play. So instead, I got Pokemon Bank for $5 mm -hmm. on the 3DS that I already have at home, and I transferred all of my Pokemon out of Ultra Sun, reset my save data, and now I'm playing it again. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, another... Like, this is going to be the second time I've played through the game with a, a theme team. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been having a great time so far. I've been using Pokemon that I would never... I would never think to use... Like right now, I've got uh, a uh, I can't remember its actual name because I I nicknamed mine uh, Lady Baba because it's a lady. Isn't a lady it just bug. Lady Ba? I think it might be Lady Ba. Uh huh. But uh, I was like, are ladybugs pollinators? And you were like, no, but they eat aphids. <laughs> They're good for the garden. You want them. <laughs> yeah. So right now I've got Ladyba is essentially my main Pokemon because I banked the starters because none of the starters fit the theme. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a biocontrol. Yeah. So it's just, it's it's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to, I, I need to find a, uh, a, a Stoutland. Mm -hmm. Because it's a herding dog. Like I don't uh -huh. want I don't want rock rough, but uh -huh. I do want I want a herding dog. I'm just having a good time. So for five dollars you're not missing out. Right. But <laughs> but maybe could I do the same thing with sword? I don't know. I just I don't know. Ninety dollars is a big ask, you know. 
Yeah, it's a big ask if you're not really interested in whatever innovation the game has to offer over the old ones. Yeah, it also doesn't help that I'm not way into like the sports theme. Yeah. Like the all of the footballing that's going on. Bleh. Yeah, that's kind of ties into it it's sort of like God, this is going on for way too long. Very, very briefly, the pinnacle of Pokemon, like the best Pokemon I've ever experienced in my entire life actually has been Pokemon Conquest. Yeah, I because, remember. I remember. Because of two big things. First off, unevolved Pokemon are still viable. They mm -hmm. still have uses, which yeah. is great. Uh, and leveling is recast as how much you and your Pokemon love one another. Oh! Yeah. It I replacing leveling with like an affection meter that is functionally identical. Like it goes from a like a one to one hundred scale. It's it's very comparable. Um, is fantastic. It should be the model for this dream of mine. This proposed reboot of the franchise. Yeah, I would love to see that if it was just friendship. If that was your Pokemon's. Experience meter was just the oh, power of friendship. It could be called Pokemon Friendship is Battle. No, that's horrible. That's adorable. I'm saying it outright in very clear terms. <laughs> they already, somebody already did that. Somebody already did a, a My Little Pony game with a a twist on that name. I wasn't trying to reference My Little Pony. Oh, then it's just weird. I'm reading this now. Okay. <laughs> Cloudbank's racing circuit never knew the likes of Preston Moyle, who shattered speed records with aplomb for four years straight. Credited with popularizing the sport of... Oh, no, sorry. I'm, I'm having to... I'm having trouble comp comprehending that. Uh, 1,200cc racing. Good lord. That's a lot. That's pod racing. <laughs> Yeah. Mr. Moyle gained celebrity not merely for his exceptional riding ability, but also because he built his motorbikes with his own hands. Ever the thrill seeker, Mr. Moyle became known for seeking out Cloudbank's remotest strips of road. Then one day, Mr. Moyle was altogether gone, having left all of his personal effects behind, save for his fastest bike. Meow. Tracking systems on his bike indicate that Mr. Moyle headed northwest across the canals late one night, averaging speeds 228% faster than the common standard. <laughs> he surely was aware that the northwestern corner of Cloudbank was offline pending investigation. And this was likely the appeal. Well, I mean, that's some safe recklessness. Good job, man. Yeah. Having his very own abandoned part of town to race through on his custom bike was Preston Moyle's dream. And the reality lived up to the dream, judging by the volume of Mr. Moyle's laughter recorded by his bike. However, the recording stopped abruptly. OVC first declared Mr. Moyle's absence a full five days later. So sure were his associates that he would return like always. His close friends did not worry more than the usual for three days, but for each subsequent day their worry increased on average of 84%. <laughs> this quotient proceeded to spread to the numerous fans Mr. Moyle's illustrious career... Uh, spread to the numerous fans of Mr. Moyle's illustrious career, although administrators barred any appeals to search for him in an offline district. When did we find him? Oh. Well, he's where we got Jaunt, so he was another early one. Yeah. Um, I don't actually... Poor guy, but at the same time, mm. I mean, like, if you're gonna go out, like, go out doing what you love, right? It's sort of dark to consider some of these people like uh, Breach technically mm -hmm. and Spark we got from the dead or dying yeah others and this is Grizzly were preloaded all of the ones that we get from leveling up they are people that must have been uh, traced by the transistor Sometime in the past. Mm. I think Jaunt might have... Did we get Jaunt by default? I don't think that we picked Jaunt up from the environment, but I can't I can't recall anymore. But keep that in mind. Like, there are multiple sources for the, the functions we're getting. Uh, so some of these people... Like, I think Mask, for example. Mask was a leveling option, which means it... 
it was a dark deed done a while ago. Hmm. Do we have time enough for probably a boss? Oh, no. No? No. Um, we're about... Actually, we could end the episode right now. Hmm. It feels like a little bit of an anticlimax. Why not... Read this one for me. Okay. Niola? Niola. Shen. Shin. Shin? Niola Shin. <clears throat> one would have difficulty finding a more active or outspoken member of the community of Cloudbank's Goldwalk District as Miss no Niola Shin. She allotted more than 66% of her available time on activities such as passing ordinances to improve underdeveloped regions, reaching out to and educating habitual non-voters, or advocating for groups lacking adequate representation. Her motives were rarely questioned, as her love for the district was in fact sincere, stemming from positive early experiences that grew to become fierce nostalgia. Miss Shen did have her detractors, however, and this became very clear at the opening she arranged for the Goldwalk Channel. The channel was to be a gallery space of sorts, designed to showcase eclectic works from those pursuing non-standard vocations that traditionally held little share. Instead, Miss Shen found herself accused of stirring unrest by calling attention to, the, to meritless perspectives undeserving of notice. The group accosting her was angry for 17 different reasons in total. God, I love the specificity of, of all of these. It's a little dark. It's creepy, but I love... I, it's such a good... Uh, okay, sorry. The group accosting her was angry for 17 different reasons in total, including how the channel edged out a competing vote for a metro station that would have bridged the gap from Goldwalk to neighboring High Rise in one short ride. Miss Shen publicly lost her composure in this particular incident, which would have escalated further if not for several individuals who stood in her defense. They later offered their support with any such matters in the future. She agreed to meet with them, not realizing who they were. The camarada saw Miss Shen, an, saw in Miss Shen an invaluable moral compass of sorts, someone predominantly driven by philanthropic goals and seeking no personal gain from her action. This type of perspective, they felt, was an important counterbalance in comparison to some of the other individuals they had in mind, whose work was no less significant to the city but whose intentions were not as plain to see. After her disappearance, those who knew Mrs. Shen reluctantly came to believe that the channel incident shook her resolve enough to where she decided to go away for a while to reignite her passions. That makes all kinds of sense. But why... Why... This guy. Hmm. I do love the fact that he's definitely wearing a bow tie with no shirt collar to hold it up. <laughs> he's just wearing it with his moto jacket. It's adorable. No, I think that I don't think that that's like a, a super muscly chest. I think that he's. You don't. I think he's just got a, a buttoned up shirt that's getting lost in the shadow of the neck. I don't see it. I choose to believe the other thing. He's just got one of those policeman bow ties. If you catch my drift. <laughs> this gentleman needs to find a cake to jump out of. <laughs> I so he must have just been an accident or incidental. Like he he must have stumbled on to something. Yeah. In the offline district. I definitely get that feeling. Okay. There's some bad doings about. That is the friendliest way I've ever heard someone described organized crime. Bad doings. Got those those bad seeds out there, sowing dark fruits, bitter fruits. Leave a bad taste in your mouth. They're yucky. 
These yucky bad crimers. Grimy crimers. <laughs>